Cocktails have never been more popular or the art of mixology more respected. And from Singapore to Sydney, LA to London, appreciation for drinks with a twist is changing bar culture worldwide. World Class is the only global cocktail competition of its kind. This year, there are more competitors facing more complex challenges than ever before. And to add to the excitement, it's being staged aboard a luxury cruise liner sailing the Mediterranean. After two days of full-on challenges, Call for it. designed to test every aspect of their skill, style, speed, stamina, technique and creativity, our 44 contestants became 16 in the first elimination. Today, those remaining face two challenges and a further elimination. I'm Spike Marchant. And I'm Dale DeGraff. Join us on an incredible voyage around the Mediterranean to find this year's World's Best Bartender. Today's first challenge is taking place on Ibiza, a party destination and summer home to the jet ski set. As well as the super rich with their mega yachts, more than two million visitors head here every year for the unique mix of music and Mediterranean manana. But for our 16 bartenders today, it's business as usual. The Tapas Taste Test has been designed to test their skills at matching drinks with food. The new Vogue in cocktail bars is serving bite-sized dishes with drinks. You can't have a competition without judges. Ours are bartending legends who have made cocktails for, among others, David Bowie, Justin Timberlake and Her Majesty the Queen. A dry martini, since you're asking. It's been a really eye-opening experience so far. <laughs> The top 16 is some really impressive stuff and some things that I've never seen. I've tasted some really interesting cocktails and I'm really excited to see what they do with the food pairing challenge today. Overseeing the judges are Dale DeGroff, father of the modern cosmopolitan, and Spike Marchant, world-class global ambassador. This tapas challenge requires a real knowledge of food. They have to be able to find flavors that either mix in a really beautiful way or contrast with the flavors in their drinks. It's going to be a mountain to climb for some of these guys. Today's tapas are a long way from patatas bravas or pimentos de padron. Instead, they are dishes with complex and contrasting ingredients. Wasabi beef with sweet and bitter lemons or trifle with toffee, cherry and sweet bean meringue. It's definitely a tough challenge, you know, it's an understanding of flavors and what matches. And if you work in a bar that doesn't serve food, you're really at a, a disadvantage. Each bartender will taste all six dishes and pick two to work with. Tasting carefully and making detailed notes could be the difference between being eliminated or not. After the tasting, they have just 30 minutes in the sandbox to prepare. With the temperature hitting 40 degrees, it's hot, hectic and high pressure, with limited ingredients available. There was one ounce of yellow chartreuse, and I was like, thank God when I, when I saw that little mini airplane bottle when I came up. Emil from Sweden's idea of drinks and food pairing is a pint with a packet of crisps. I don't feel confident doing cocktails with food. I don't think it fits. I drink beer to food. I don't know what this is, but it tastes good. One and a half minutes remaining, one and a half minutes. Thank you so much. Excuse me here. Representing the United States of America, Mr. Jeffrey Bell! Jeff is making a tequila-based drink to match with the oyster, pear and carrot tapas. So I put in some red bell pepper, and I'm just going to add a touch of gum syrup, and a bit of lime juice. We're going to add a little herbal quality from yellow chartreuse. And the salty component of this dish, I felt that that just screamed tequila, and it'd be a wonderful pairing with the reposado. Woo! So we'll strain that out. And this is the Marina Margarita. My name is Tsuyoshi Miyazaki from Japan. Traditional Japanese Ginza bartenders do not serve food with their drinks. This is a big ask for Suyoshi. Suyoshi Miyazaki! Ginza style is precise, unhurried and formal. It's an experience not unlike the traditional Japanese tea ceremony. Minus the geishas, of course. 
もちろんパフォーマンスは大事ですけどまずはそのシチュエーションにそのゲストの,ゲストの、えー、思考とシチュエーションに合ったカクテル味が最も大事でそこにパフォーマンスがついてくればプラスアルファとして評価があると思いますまずはでも味が大事というふうに考えますシャルトリューズで表現いたします思ってたより料理のクオリティが高かったので、えー、っとカクテルと合わせるっていうのはいろんな難しい要素が入ってた分いろいろ迷いましたフレッシュのライムジュースで表現しますフレッシュライムジュースはキーイングリディエントのスイヨシスコクテル which is then balanced with sugar syrup One syrup However, something's not quite right and after tasting, he decides to add some more sugar syrup The two syrup now 一つ目のカクテルのちょっとライムの状態をですね確認するのを忘れてしまったで、えー、味見を何回かしてスビヨシメイクストータルオフ3アジャスメントスポーティスハッピーウィッドドリンクフォーサムワンソーフォーカスドンパフェクションヒーウォーノーフィーハッピーウィッドスポーティスやってしまったあの作る時にちょっとバタバタしてしまったっていうのは反省してますカクテル名がスビヨシアムルカッシュンアムフォーマスラリアマイパスペクティブのコクテルズでハッピーデリシャス Luke has a lot to live up to. Last year, Tim Phillips took the winner's trophy home to Sydney, and there's a lot of pressure on Luke to do the same. I think the most important thing about bartending is the hospitality aspect. People will come in for a cocktail, but they'll come back for the hospitality. Good afternoon, judges. We're we'll doing a,、uh, a Talisker based cocktail. With this one, we've got a little bit of red pepper going in there. So just bruise this up a little bit. Then we're going to add 30 mils of our Talisker. I've chosen to go with Noirly Pratt, the red vermouth. It's not overly sweet, it still has some nice herbal elements to it as well. We're going to go 45 mils. To that, we're going to add 10 mils of Dom Benedictine to offset the spice from the capsicum. A couple of fresh basil leaves, just three of those. Just give those a little clap. I previously worked at a bar which did cocktail degustations and matching drinks with the, the courses, so I had an opportunity to play with a lot of different food ingredients that you wouldn't necessarily. Put into a cocktail. I'm actually going to add to this 10 mils of tomato juice, a light misting of the balsamic over the top. Luke's salty whiskey based drink is designed to match with the goat's cheese aubergine and chili tapas. Please say cheese. Enjoy. <laughs> All 16 bartenders battle it out in the Abitan sunshine, shaking and making for a place in the last eight. It may look fun, but it's not easy. It's 38 degrees out here. We're standing in the sun, dehydrate. You gotta keep your focus. You don't know what the judges、uh, look for, and the dishes we got today were so tasteful, so many flavors. Yeah, that was difficult. That was difficult. With the tapas challenge finished, time for Spike and Dale to reflect. Bartenders go back, they taste their cocktail, but not often they adjust it. Suyoshi, the Japanese bartender, he went once. Twice, adjusted his cocktail three times until he went that right. But he did it with such creation, such style, you thought it was part of the deal. <laughs> Jeff Bell, perfect matches, I gotta tell you. He did this wonderful tequila based with the red pepper, chartreuse, all these right flavors, and boy, did he need this. Hmm, time for a drink, I think. And who better to show us how to make a Mai Tai than the current world class champion, Tim Phillips? Go, Tim! Hi. This is my version of the Mai Tai. We're going to start off with some lime. We're going to go with 20 mils. As well as that freshly squeezed lime, I like to get some of the lime oils in there. So take an extra wedge, squeeze it, and then drop it straight in. Now we've got the lime, we're going to balance it out with some sweetness. We're going to start with some French almond syrup, 10 mils. To accent that as well, We start taking some orange curacao, 10 mils. Then we need the star of the show, some rum, 40 mils of this stuff. And then just to accent it, here's my top tip. We're going to add some smoky whiskey, only a dribble of this because it's quite potent. I'm going to go with 10 mils. And there we have it. Cocktail's basically ready. Let's shake it up. A little bit of crushed ice, straight in. Don't mind the fingers. Give a little bit of a shake. That's all it needs, just to awaken up the citrus. Fresh ice. 
and then throw it straight over. Slice of orange, sprig of mint, and there's my Mai Tai. Next, find out which sex pistol has a cocktail named after him. And prepare yourselves for the unkindest cut of all, our final elimination. Before the second elimination, there's one more challenge. We're always telling bartenders to be sparing and only use those ingredients that make sense for the cocktail. Now they have a real challenge. Use multiple ingredients and make them all work. In Whiskey Mystery, bartenders pick cards which determine the ingredients they have to make their cocktails. The more ingredients they use, the more points they get. But the drink must also pass the taste test. Hmm, let's hope no one gets the Marmite, Treacle, Plum, Syrup and Lime combo. Give these guys room. You're 30 minutes. We'll start now. What Speak the to hell each other. Is it? This was designed to push them to the limit. And at this point in the competition, there's very little room for error. Uh, who's got nine nine King this is a chance to show creativity. Now Spike is seeing just how creative the bartenders can be. Diamonds, ace diamonds. Yeah. New ideas. Uh, I'm using all eight. Great. That will score you extra points. Yeah. All they will use with uh, lemongrass. What about uh, an aromatic note? Anything along the top? Any perfumes? Gareth Evans of the UK's ingredients are like leftovers from a student party. Dates, sour cherries, salted lemons, squid ink, a mystery nut liqueur, and there was a, a pine berry liqueur as well. If you're a bartender, people come to your bar all the time and say, you know, make me a drink with this and this, and it's, it's your job to think on your feet. They've never come to the bar with squid ink before. I'm going to make a punk Bloody Mary. It's the Bloody Mary that the man doesn't want me to make, but I don't do what the man wants me to do. So the man would not definitely not want me to put Talisker in it. But we're at sea, so we're going to put 40 mils. The mystery box is not kind to me today. Uh, so I have preserved lemons, salted lemons. So that's going to kind of act as like a salting agent to it. I've gone for uh, balsamic vinegar uh, for two reasons. One, I think it works better. Two, I couldn't find the Worcester sauce. So 10 mils of that in as well. And the traditional Tabasco. We go three dashes of that. We'll have 125 mils of tomato juice. And then, this is squid ink. Seems appropriate that we're at sea. Seems appropriate with the Talisca, and I couldn't not use it, basically. So I think throwing is a lot better idea with a Bloody Mary than shaking or rolling. It's really good for aerating it. Doesn't water it down too much. And it looks cool. So I'm just gonna serve that high and mighty. It has squid ink in it, so this is my punk Bloody Mary that the man does not want me to make, Squid Vicious. Squid Vicious? Will it work for the judges or just leave them pretty vacant? Then try it. Squid ink's quite lightly flavoured. It's an odd colour, I'll give you that. This is the longest day in the competition so far, and by the time the final competitor steps up to the bar, it's almost midnight. Have we saved the best for last? Mr. Emil, hooray! Emil tells a story which includes head judges Dale DeGroff and Spike Marchant. And the story is about a nightclub. This is the nightclub. This is the bouncer. So six Americans walks into a bar, 60 mils of bourbon. And these guys are pretty noisy. Then they're coming three weird looking fellas. So we got some black mustard pepper and made a syrup out of it. So we got 30 mils of that. These guys are actually having a good time. The Americans and the guy with the black coats, they're dancing and having a good time. Then Mr. Daily Graf comes. And now it's quiet again. Everybody just stares at what he's doing here. But he's by himself. So only one dash of Mr. Daily Graf. And Mr. Daily Graf, he has a friend. And I have never seen this guy, Cordial Medoc, but I heard from Spike that it's like a vine liqueur kind of thing from France. And then, to have a party, you always need a crazy sweet. Hey! 
So the crazy Swede walks in and the bouncer said, yeah, yeah, it's okay, you can come in. So everybody starts dancing. And the bouncer, he's done his shift now, he's done. He goes and have a break now. And then... The trouble the begins, eh? The, now the trouble begins. The whole population of Iceland comes. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a long party. This, so this is the end of the party. So everybody goes home to a glass. So guys, this is the closing hour flip. Let's go home. <laughs> They had a good laugh and everybody laughed around me, so I think that I think they loved it. I think I did pretty good this round, yeah. Day five of the competition, and it's time for the last elimination. Being so close to making it to the final eight, all 16 feel they've got what it takes. It's a tense time for everyone. They'll go in front of Spike and Dale in pairs. One will go through, one won't make it. First to hear their fate are Mario from Puerto Rico and Simon from the Cayman Islands. Mario, you are brilliant by turns and occasionally stumble. In the tapas table, you shone. You go through to the last eight. So Simon, you're a terrific bartender and you know it. But for this competition, your journey is over. For Mario, this is a bittersweet outcome. He and Simon are great friends. So much so that Simon immediately offers to help him. I need some help. Yeah. Yeah. Next, it's Luke from Australia and Mattia from Italy. Buonasera. Buonasera. G'day. G'day. So, Mattia, you're not going to be moving on tomorrow. And Luke, you're in the last eight. Angus from the UAE and Suiyoshi from Japan are next. Angus, you're not moving on. Yoshi, you are through to the final eight. Cross from China is up against David from Spain. Cross, you're not going to be moving on tomorrow. David, you're through. Congratulations. Emil from Sweden is going head to head with Laura from Switzerland. Feeling a bit nervous, but. I hope I can get through to the top eight. Laura, your food and wine background came through and you were matching. I'm sorry to say you're going to have to work very hard tomorrow when you go forward. Emil, your journey of world class stops here. Congratulations, Laura. Oh. Good luck. Unaware of Emil's shock elimination, Monica from Norway and Kirill from Russia are waiting nervously. Good luck. Monica, so far you've competed in six tests of your ability and skill. And Monica, You've been consistent. Is that enough to get you a place in the last eight? Well, Monica, yes, that is enough. You've done extraordinary work. You're going forward. Kiro, yes. for 2013, the road stops here. It's very good. Because I had to wait so long and I was thinking, no, 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 I'm not getting through, I'm not getting through. And then I was thinking like, oh, at least I can enjoy, enjoy the pool. But then when they... <laughs> Gareth from the UK, who the other bartenders rate highly, has been paired with Jason from New Zealand, who is a relative unknown. Jason? Welcome to the last day. You're going forward. Gareth. The 
road stops here. This was a major shock for everyone, who assumed Gareth's assured style, intelligent modern mixing and presentations would have won him a place in the last eight. The final pair are Jeff Bell of the US and Ifa de Lange of the Netherlands. <laughs> I, I, I really want to win. It's the most well-respected competition in the world. It's judged by the most esteemed judges, pioneers of the industry. To be named Barton Beer by them is quite an honor, so to win is it's pretty, it's pretty big. Fiercely competitive, each feels he deserves the last place in the final. I made it to the last 16. Happy with my performances. But yeah, I think I can win. But there is only one place left. It's getting more nerve-wracking by the second, actually. Gentlemen. Jeff, you know you struggled in the market uh, challenge. Uh, you had two brave and courageous attempts at creating rosé and champagne. Eva, your intelligence, your understanding has shone in all the challenges you've undertaken. Ivar, I'm sorry to say that your journey ends here. You won't be going on till tomorrow. And Jeff, you made the cut. You're through to the last eight. Congratulations. I thought, I thought you were moving up. Losing three such talented competitors as Ifa, Gareth and Emil shows how high the standard is. The reactions of the eliminated bartenders say it all and show how much the competition means to them. Getting so close and being knocked out at this stage is devastating. Up on the pool deck, the reaction to the finalists couldn't be more different. <laughs> Thanks, brother. Game face, man. Thank you. Another challenge. Yeah. It's really awesome. Now that I've made it, I can say that you have to be careful with what you wish in life. <laughs> it might come true. <laughs> Still work to do. We still keep our mind uh, focused, and uh, let's wait to Barcelona and see and hit out and see how it goes. Next time, spills and thrills in cocktails against the clock, and finally the winner of this year's world class is announced in a spectacular closing ceremony. To learn more about bartending and the world's finest drinking experiences, go to our definitive drinking guide online.